Hey, what's up, kiddos? Welcome to another edition of 6th grade math by Miss Musgrove. Uh, this one we're going to talk about different mathematical properties. So, let's get going. So, there are four main properties that we're going to cover in this video. You have the commutative property, the associative property, identity property, and the distributive property. And how we're going to use these expressions is to find two expressions that are equivalent to each other or equal to each other. And these properties are going to be used to show that. So first up, let's talk about the commutative property. So that word commutative comes from the word commute, which means to move from one place to another, like how you commute from your house to school every day. So in math, this property works when you're dealing with addition and multiplication. For example, if I have 4 plus 2, that is equal to the same thing I would get if I did 2 plus 4, because 4 plus 2 is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So it doesn't matter the order of my 4 and 2 here, how I added them, I was still going to get the same sum. Now the same applies if I did 4 times 2, or 2 times 4. What am I going to get both times? That's right, I'm going to get 8, both times. So 4 times 2 and 2 times 4 are two equivalent expressions. And you showed that by moving the numbers around. It's going to give you the same result. Now what it does not work with, the commutative property does not work with, and you'll find this is common throughout, is division or subtraction. Definitely doesn't work with those two operations. So make sure when you're doing the commutative property, you're sticking to addition, and you're sticking to multiplication. So next up, we're going to talk about the associative property. So the associative property focuses on grouping. How numbers are grouped together when you're adding or multiplying doesn't change the result that you're going to get. And in mathematics, the main thing that we use for grouping are parentheses. If you go back to PEMDAS, P stands for parentheses. That's how you group stuff together. And again, Remember, this works with adding and multiplying only, not division or subtra subtraction. So let's say I have two equivalent expressions, 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 1 plus 2 plus 3. Well, that's just the same thing written twice, so that's not showing the associative property yet. So let me throw in something to group some numbers together here. Let's throw in some parentheses. So let's say on the first side of the equal sign, I'm going to group 1 and 2 together. And then on the second side, I'm going to group 2 and 3 together. So do you think this is going to change your end answer when you finish? Well, let's see. Well, in PEMDAS, okay, we <clears throat> do parentheses first. So I need to take care of what's in parentheses. So 1 plus 2 would be 3. And then 3 plus 3 equals 6. Over here, 2 plus 3 is 5. And then 1 plus 5 is 6. So I had the numbers grouped in different ways, but I still got that same end result of 6. So that's the associative property with addition. So now let's do the same thing with the same numbers, except instead of doing addition, we're going to do multiplication. So let's group the 1 and the 2 in the first one, and the 2 and the 3 in the second expression. So again, PEMDAS, you got to do parentheses first. So 1 times 2 would be 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Over here, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 1 is 6. So you still got the same thing, even though you grouped the 1 and the 2 together on the first side of the expression, and then the 2 and the 3 together on the second side. So again, this does not work with division or subtraction. It only works with addition and multiplication. So next up is a pretty easy property called the identity property. So with the identity property, the whole goal is to get the same answer. So if you add a zero or to something or multiply something by one, you're going to get the original something that you started with. Now this one also works with subtraction. If you subtract a zero from something, you're going to get the same answer. And if you divide something by one, you're going to get the same answer. But typically we associate these properties with adding and multiplying. So it's going to get the same answer no matter what. For example, if I have four plus zero, well, that's the same thing as 4, okay? That 0 does not affect this 4 in any way whatsoever. If I took that same 4 and multiplied it by 1, 
I'm still going to get 4. It does not change your original answer in both cases. So last but not least, we have the distributive property, and this one's kind of in a league of its own. It's definitely one of the most complicated uh, properties that we talk about here in sixth grade. So our ultimate goal is still to, com to create two equivalent expressions, but the distributive property um, takes it one farther, and instead of just adding and multiplying like all these other ones have been, uh, you can either multiply something in to get a, an equivalent expression, or you can divide something out to get an equivalent expression. And I'm going to show a couple of examples of that. So really, the distributive property should have a video of all of its own. But let's start with the multiply in way. And we're going to take an expression uh, with 4 and then parentheses, 2 plus 3 inside parentheses. Now, going back to what we've learned so far about expressions and maybe algebra, whenever you have a number written right next to parentheses, that means multiplication. And distributive property, again, is either going to be associated with multiplying something in to parentheses or dividing something out or basically simplifying a number out of the parentheses. So if you look at the regular old PEMDAS way of solving this expression, you would do parentheses first, right? So you would do what's inside, 2 plus 3 is 5, and then the outside, 4 times 5 gives you 20. So that's the typical way. Now we're learning a new way, and I'm going to abbreviate distributive property DP. So if I have a number outside of parentheses, I can actually take that number and distribute it in through multiplication to each of the numbers inside. And I'm still going to get this same answer of 20 by doing it this way. So if I did 4 times 2, I would get 8. And I want to keep that addition sign in, this, in between here. 4 times 3 is 12. And looky there, 8 plus 12 is still 20. So you took that 4 outside, rather than doing the parentheses inside first, you took the 4 outside and distributed it to both items inside the parentheses, and then took care of the operation that was in the parentheses. And that's the distributive property um, using multiplication to take something outside and move it inside. So basically what we're showing here is that this expression is equivalent using the distributive property of multiplying that 4 in to 8 plus 12. These two would be equivalent expressions using the distributive property. Now let's try this division. So if you're trying to show the distributive property using division, uh, that means you're trying to take a regular looking expression and use division to create uh, an expression that looked like what we started with in that last example that had a number outside the parentheses and then two numbers inside the parentheses. And to get the number that you need on the outside, you look at the two numbers that you have and find their greatest common factor. Remember greatest common factor? The largest number that will go into both of these numbers uh, evenly. So I'm looking at 12 and I'm looking at 16 and I know that their greatest common factor is the number 4. So, remember, when we put that 4 in last time, we multiplied. So, if you want to get the 4 back out, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So, you want to divide both of these numbers by the 4 to get the two numbers that you need in here. So, 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. So 12 plus 16 is equivalent or equal to 4 outside the parentheses and inside parentheses 3 plus 4. So if I want to prove this, we can redistribute that 4 inside the parentheses using multiplication. Um, and we should still get 12 plus 16 after we do that. So if I take this 4, multiply it times 3, I get 12. If I take this 4, multiply it times 4, I get 16. So I know that this is an equivalent expression here to 12 plus 16 because I used the division side of the distributive property to take a 4 out of the 12 and the 16 to get this expression on this side here. So you do see the di distributive property a lot with algebraic expressions once they actually contain variables. Um, so let's just do one example of that. We're going to distribute this 3 inside the parentheses here using multiplication. So when we do that, 
We can only multiply the 3 times the coefficients, or the numbers that are in front of the variables, because we don't know what the variables equal, so we can't really do anything other than that. So I take the 3 times the 2z, and that gives me 6z. And then I would take the 3 times the 2y, and that gives me 6y. So now you have this expression equivalent to this expression by distributing um, through multiplication, multiplying that 3 into the parentheses. All right, so let's do one more example with the distributive property. So this time, we're going to take an algebraic expression, and we're going to divide out. We're going to find the greatest common factor of your coefficients here. So the greatest common factor that will go into 14 and 21 is 7. So when I take the 7 out of both of those coefficients, 14 divided by 7, oops, I didn't quite leave myself enough space, is going to leave me 2c minus 21 divided by 7 is going to leave me 3p. So these two, then, are equivalent expressions to each other. So if I want to prove that, I can redistribute that 7 back into the parentheses, and I would still get the same thing, 14c minus 21p. So that's it. That's the distributive property. Hope this helped you learn your properties a little bit better. Stay tuned for more videos. Good luck.